Hi, we're going for a walk on Rizzers Beach and um, it's pretty amazing so I'm going to let you take a look at it before the video starts. This is Rizzers Beach, which is our local evening walk. It's only about seven minutes drive from our studio. And it's a very long beach, but it's a great walk in the evenings. But it is a little bit cold tonight. About 44 degrees Fahrenheit. I've got a few pieces to unload from the kiln. Jackie was very motivated with her last firing um, of earthenware, so I thought, um, I would fire some more pieces of hers that she had. Uh, another four teapots for sure. Let's see what we have here. I didn't have enough to fill the kiln, but almost. And I had a deadline for some prizes. So, um, so this is one of her nested bird balls that she does. And that's very pretty. This is an old design that she's done for 35 years, I guess, and always makes it different. But uh, it's nested birds. This is part of a show prize uh, grouping I've got in here. It's another way you can make a, uh, some income as a potter if you make prizes for um, various events, dogs, cats, whatever the show is. I guess they have rabbit shows too. And I fire these on stilts because it's earthenware. So this is a cone 04 firing raised up about 20 degrees in the profile. Um, a program that I put into it, um, but this is a uh, Norwich or Norfolk Terriers. I can never remember the difference between those, so I simply put the name of the show prize on with a little silhouette of the dog. So these are going to be mailed out to Texas tomorrow, and there's the other one. So you know, come up with something fairly unique you can do as show prizes, and you've got to learn how to write really neatly, obviously. That's another one. Jackie had one more mug. She's done of some little gulls or ducks. I'm not sure which they are. Oh, that might be a duck for sure. These could be gulls, but I think they're all ducks. Um, but the ducks and the gulls all swim together. There you go. And then I have a whole bunch. So I'm going to show you one of these because they're all similar. Somebody would just ask me for a farm mug, so I did a bunch more farm mugs. I didn't have that many in the gallery. Cows, sheep, and barns, uh, houses and such, so. And now we have the teapots. Wow, look at that. That's a lot of detail. Combination of underglaze painting, some scraffito in there. That good contrast too, good color. There you go. Yeah, wow. Yeah, she liked these teapots. Oh, and here's a nested bird's teapot too, so that'll go nicely with that bowl. Nice shapes for the birds too. have the, the little lids for the teapot so I can match these up and you can see them with the lid. Boy she's gonna have a nice display in the gallery. Oh, 
yeah, I'll, I'll have to do another video in the gallery. So in the winter, not much changes in the gallery because although yesterday we saw two framed pieces, um, but um, you know, there's not a lot of tourist traffic at the moment, so. But this time of year, it gets slowly more and more traffic. This time of year, we find a lot of people are here just to look for houses. This is a boom, I like everywhere, I bet, but it's booming here with retirees now, people moving from Ontario and other areas of Canada, retiring to the coast. And so houses only stay on the market, sometimes a week, and they sell for more than the asking price. There you go. But it's beautiful here, you can see why people want to end up here, so... Oh, and she's got a whole bunch of balls down here. There's the duck, match the duck on the piece. Very nice. She's, this one's really especially nice. And then, get rid of two of these, two more of the mugs. And now it's a bunch of balls. There we go. The stilts always come off so nice on earthenware pieces. Lots of birds. It's raining, it's dreary outside today, but it's warm. I mean, up, going up to 16 degrees today. And the weather this time of year, it could be below freezing again tomorrow, but, but it's a warm day today. It snowed in Northern Nova Scotia last night, but we just got rain. We had like an inch and a half of rain though. What's that, uh, 35, 40 millimeters of rain. Yeah, she spends hours doing these. She could maybe make two pieces a day when Jackie paints these. I throw the bowl for her and then she takes it and paints, but it's literally, and her hands hurt when she's painting these. Oh, and this is interesting. She's always said that she does these almost in a dreamlike state, like she's flying up in the air. So that's why you'll see an upside down house every so often, because when you're flying, you're seeing houses from all around your vision, 360 degrees, I guess. Um, but she's always had that, and there's some more down there. Like she's one of the birds flying above them. And that is a very Chagall-like feeling of painting because he painted almost in a dream-like condition in his paintings. It's very dreamy. I still don't have a studio cat. I've got two raccoons now outside. I'm, they're awake. I've been putting food out for them. So, um, not supposed to do that really, but um, they put their little paws up at my window and stand on their hind legs with their front paws on the window just looking at me. Of course that masked face is just irresistible. All right. Here's the last one of the show prize. This is the the top prize, I guess. Best of breed. So and two more of the 
just, I think they'll just go to something else, I don't know what. We've got two more of those. So that's a quick unfold, un, un, unloading. Um, I've got lots more to fire, um, so um, I'll uh, talk to you later. It seems like it's never ending, doesn't it? There's so many pieces of pottery, but this time of the year you just have to make as much as you can because you don't get much chance in the summer because it's very busy with people. Let's get on with the video. Hi, right, here's a little kiln interlude. I took some little trays off the top that were not really that worth interesting looking at. But underneath here we've got some teapots and some mugs for an order. So it's always nice to look at some interesting coffee mugs. But um, oh, let's see, folk art white and my apple green with oatmeal over the top. Teapot. Yep, that's that one looks pretty good. This is variegated. No, yeah, it's variegated blue and oatmeal over the top of my bright blue, which I hesitate because I it always goes this greeny instead of bright blue, it goes this greeny turquoisey blue. Dark, of course, but um, that's the color just there. Um, and on white clay, it's always very bright blue. So, but it's always nice, and there's a little carving on the teapot to give it an accent there. Fluting, obviously, um, and I should show it with a lid on. It fits. All right, so there's that teapot. I don't know if I did a video of these or not. Um, and then we've got a bunch of mugs, dark. This is all over my speckled clay. So that's the dark blue, variegated blue, and oatmeal. Um, and I've got sets of these. So I'll right, quickly. They're all very similar very nice but very similar so you don't need to spend too much time on those ones it's just it, the, the richness in that area there is always what makes these so appealing but that dark blue is a cobalt blue somebody asked me about that here's this uh, matte turquoise i have which is a combination of two turquoises that i mixed together because they were so similar um, and then my yellow oatmeal over the top of it. Another one of the folk art whites over the speckled clay with my oatmeal and some yellow over the top there. So I did oatmeal and yellow over the top of that, which was my, um, this is a matte yellow oatmeal. Then I had my oatmeal and yellow glaze over the top there. So very creamy. Somebody asked me for some light color mugs for an order. So I've been trying to make more lighter ones, and that one didn't go that light. That was my apple green, but it's, oh no, this is the old apple green. That's right, this is uh, what's left over of an old batch. 
matte turquoise and yellow oatmeals. Another one of the apple green with the yellow oatmeals over the top. This is bright blue, variegated blue and, and oatmeal over the speckled clay again. Another one of the dark blue ones. I need six of each mug, basically. And there's another one of the lighter ones. That's a nice, that's an old, from an older glaze session I did and all that, but that's very nice. That's folk art white with apple green and oatmeal over the top. Another one of the dark green and another one of the matte turquoise. Both have the yellow oatmeals over the top. Finally on that level is my dark blue. There's a little blister opened up on that one. But um, sometimes the clays underneath will affect the glaze, so there might have been something in the clay there. And now we have some more of the pieces I did for the sauce. Did I just, I just uh, finished this video, but I haven't posted it yet. That's very creamy. That's my matte yellow with my folk art white and oatmeal over the top. So remember, I'm trying to do some lighter colored pieces. Wow. <laughs> that yellow is my bright yellow, uh, and that is strong. Do I like it? I'm not sure I like that color combination, so I probably won't do that again. I think I did quite a few pieces like that, though. Dark blue, variegated blue and oatmeal. Uh, bright blue oatmeal and variegated blue. Same again. Remember, these are the boats that you mix your batter and then just pour like that because it's good for the wrist. And then another, oh, a nice one with the runs going down. That's because of the fluting, the glaze goes between those lines. That's nice. This works well. That's from an older glaze batch too. Sometimes things sit around because I don't have enough room to pack the kiln. So folk art white with apple green and oatmeal. And that turned out very pretty. It's not done that before. Turned out very pretty. And then I have a bunch of lids for the teapots underneath. So let's put these here. Okay, now we have the teapots. Uh-oh. I did one of the yellow and the green teapots too. Ooh, we got to have find somebody who really likes yellow. That turned out much more yellow than I thought it would. But the top is nice. It's a happy summer teapot. Let's see what the lid looks like. Lid fits. That's kind of nice. I don't hate it and I don't love it. So it's it's going to take some warming up too. But that yellow is strong, isn't it? That's mason stain sunshine yellow. From a distance, it looks pretty nice actually. So let's see. Anyway, I made eight teapots. I think I made eight. Wow, that one's nice. Lid fits. Yeah, that's nice. Just my light color oatmeals with a green bottom just to pop it off the, sh off the table a little bit. We've got some nice runs coming down there. So it's my matte oatmeal uh, with a, a, a ferro fret stain in there, which I can't remember the number of, but it was a yellow ferro fret stain. They don't long, I don't think they actually make it anymore. But anyway, and then got the folk art white over the top of it with some regular oatmeal. That's very pretty. And what do we have here? This, I don't know, if I, th I thought it was Tenriku gold, but there's hardly any speckles in there. And I actually sped the cooling cycle up on this, and I think that's why. If you look very closely there, there's a few speckles, but that was too fast to cool. I did it at 250 degrees down. 
So I think, and it also has my dark blue and oatmeal over the top of that. So you can just see the band of it. Well, that's quite a dark teapot. Uh, what does the lid look like? There we go. So to get those speckles for Tenruku Gold, well, we knew this because I did a whole bunch of tests on it. You have to cool it slower. And this was another Tenruku Gold. But look at the stripes on that. Woo, I did closer with fluting. It wasn't even fluting really, it was just my trimming tool brought down. But I didn't want the glaze to run all the way to the bottom, which is why I sped up the cooling. So I was trying to stop the, the variegated blue and oatmeal from running down so much. And I think I succeeded because it's gone down about halfway. Um, but, uh, but the Tenrico Gold doesn't have the speckles then. So slow the cooling down again. There's the lid. Nice teapot. Oh, this one looks nice. And it is my dark blue glaze with variegated blue and oatmeal over the top. Yeah, that's actually a very pretty teapot. I think that's my favorite so far. The dark blue goes almost black. The nice fluting marks on the top, a little bit of texture on the top of that as well. And we've got to be fair, we'll do some greenish color ones. And wow, that's very nice too. I did a combination of fluting and also some trimming tool marks going down that one. So there's a lot of texture on that one to catch the glaze. Yeah, nice teapot. And on my spouts, I always, I've talked about this on the picture one, make sure you make that spout turn over a little bit so the drip goes down, prop right off. And all that can't you can't really see too much, but it overhangs and goes down a little bit. And a green teapot with my mat. Yeah, it's in the dark. All the teapots are in dark red clay too, so that's why they ended up so much darker. But matte turquoise with my apple green. And I think it was the yellow oatmeal. Yeah, the yellow oatmeal over the apple green. Over the, yeah, the apple green, yeah. So trying to keep it in the greens. And that's a nice, that's for St. Patrick's Day. There you go.